Um, so today, um, before we get into the session, I uh, just want to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, where Paul um, addresses the Corinthian church and talks to them about carnality. And then he defines what is what is their struggle with carn carnality, what specifically they are struggling with, which is uh, division and uh, strife, right? So 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 3, For you are still carnal, for where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one? I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. Right. So um, Paul putting things in perspective here um, and some things that we notice is that Paul says that um, he has this very clear understanding uh, uh, about his fellow ministers. Right? We can say his team, right? even those who are not part of his team, he has this um, beautiful uh, you know, understanding, very strong revelation understanding, which cuts through all that carnality, and which cuts through all the division and strife, and and puts things in perspective for the Corinthian believers that um, that despite all the differences in roles, that they are one. Right? That he who plants, neither he who plants nor he who waters, is anything but God who gives the increase. And then he goes on to say, "We are God's fellow." workers right? and the reason um, for us to you know even as we read through this we understand that we are god's fellow workers right? that we are god's team right and and we in fact god is partnering um we are partnering with what god is doing right we are part of god's team and that's that's uh, that is god's invitation for us to be part of his team um so that is easy for us you know, as believers to come to terms with. But um, the second thing, most important, mo uh, the, uh, the, you know, most important thing is that each of us, given our different roles, maybe in leadership, that we are one, right? And as uh, Christian leaders, it's important for us to have this strong perspective or strong understanding um, so that it will it will bring in unity in the body right it will bring in unity that we understand that we are god's team um, that each one of us we are god's team that um, 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 and um, that we are all different we are all doing different roles and different tasks but we are one in christ right so let's pray that uh, we would have um, this perspective that we would not miss out on what God has for us. Um, yeah, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you today that, uh, Lord, for these words, Lord, for this understanding that despite our different roles of, uh, of sowing and watering and reaping, Lord, you're the one who gives the increase. And Father God, as leaders, Lord, as Christian leaders, Lord, we pray today that you would um, give us this heart, Lord, to see one another, Lord, those of us who are Lord, working together, Lord, maybe in teams, Lord, to see one another as one, Lord, and each one receives the reward for each one's, for one's own labor. And so, God, I pray for this understanding to sink in to our hearts, to really that our hearts will grasp this revelation so that we will put it to action. Lord, even as we function in teams, even as we work God, in, in whatever you've called us to. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. 
Um, is there a problem with the network, uh, internet? You know, I see that uh, a lot of uh, dropping off the call. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, just sharing um, our notes. So we we started by looking at uh, you know uh, building a team. When it comes to team building, we um, we started by saying that um, there are a few things that we can look at, and based on uh, what John C. Maxwell also taught, writes about in his book um, about teamwork, um, that either we can recruit, you know, start from scratch, people with these capabilities or these abilities, uh, in addition to their skill. You know, when we are looking at uh, <clears throat> uh, in any organization, when it takes in people, it uh, looks at uh, what can they bring in that specific area of need for that organization. You know, for example, if it's sales or marketing, or let's say in uh, ministry, you know, maybe that person is taken in as a worship leader or as a as a pastor or as a administrator, uh, right? So the the primary thing would be the area of skill. You know, can this person lead in worship? Is the person musically inclined? Does the person have those abilities? Um, or as an administrator, does the person have prior experience? Is the person organized? Is the person, you know, uh, have all these, is the person disciplined? Um, or as a, you know, as a pastor, does the person have, you know, uh, adequate experience shepherding God's people and so on. So the skill um, is something that we would, normally look at I'm sorry um, but these qualities uh, of uh, being in a team you know since ever uh, since we're looking at building a team are some things that we need to look at as well okay so for the while recruiting now it is possible that uh, while recruiting that people may not have these qualities in in a well-developed measure Right? These abilities might be there, but it may, may need not be fully developed, or you know, uh, maybe it's not there. Some of these things. Um, so, so that's the second part of it. You know, if we are building a team uh, and uh, building a team which is already there, right? People have already been recruited, or people are already there. Then how can I ensure that these qualities are there? And how can I ensure uh, intentionally to build these qualities in in people? Okay, so so first thing that we saw last last session was adaptability. You know, is a person able to adapt? So being uh, adapt, to, uh, being uh, able to adapt, meaning is a person agile? Are they able to adjust? Are they able to, you know, uh, you know kind of assess their strengths and resources and uh, 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 is a person able to come up with solutions, new ideas, and uh, and even you know adapt to change, right? If there is a changing environment, if there's a changing um, need, uh, change in strategy, so is a person uh, how quickly is the person adapting to change, or is the person going to be very rigid, um, you know, completely not, uh, you know, not. Uh, you know, comfortable with change, right? Then it's going to be a problem. So to be adaptable, here are a few things. Right? Uh, we need to be teachable, because uh, that's a that's a very important quality. One needs to be teachable, which means open to receive suggestions, open to receive instructions, open to learning new things. So if this is not there, then I cannot adapt. Right? Emotionally secure, not threatened by change, because. Uh, <clears throat> Adaptability, meaning adapting to new processes, adapting to new people, adapt, adapting to new, you know, structures within the team. Right? So, not not emotionally threatened by any of these things. Say, this person will take my place. This person will replace me, and you no, know, none of those. Right. So, it must be emotionally secure, and also creative. You know, think of new things, new way of doing things, a different way of doing things, and uh, you know, not be. Uh, not be fearful of trying these things, right? And also have the ability to serve. You know, have that serving mindset, uh, and also not not focusing on oneself, but focusing on others, right? Focusing on the team. How can I help the team? How can I uh, how can I 
build strength into the team how can i give bring value so so these are things that uh, a person should have right so the first thing is uh, to look at ourselves and say you know am i adaptable right if i'm not adaptable then it's going to be a problem i could be replaced right um and uh, and especially with today's um, you know what we see in this uh, a typical example would be um, you know the 2019 and 2020 right when world over when the, the pandemic hit and uh, the way ministry was done the way church um was was uh, gathering changed overnight right because of lockdowns because of restricted uh, you know uh, uh, restrictions in gathering together publicly uh, in person so the church had to adapt so if the church did not adapt then it had to you know that particular gathering had to close down so it had to adapt to new technology it had to adapt uh, very quickly and even after the you know after the pandemic um, dwindling down and everything returning to normal a sense of normalcy at least we see that well the way uh, you know church gatherings met was different because it was in person and it had to be online as well because there were a lot of people who were tuning in online maybe not from the same city but from different cities maybe from different countries um so one had to adapt to technology you know constantly improve on whatever technology was being used look at other ways of you know making things uh, making the uh, you know uh, improving the quality and making things possible so uh, one had to adapt uh, without which it was very very difficult right so adaptability in a in a team member is very important the second one is collaborative what does collaborative means it means to work together to be comfortable working together to thrive working together like like somebody said cooperation is working together agreeably but collaboration is working together aggressively which means that it's not just about agreeing but it's uh, really putting effort and working together for results right collaborating now uh, so what what does that uh, how does that happen it happens when we see one another as people who are helping one another as collaborators right as one of the same team and not as competitors Right? when we see each other as competitors oh if i you know if i share this information then this person will do better than me or if i help this person you know with this skill or with this tool uh, with this new learning then uh, with this revelation then this person will go further than me will do better than me will preach better than me right will uh, relate to people better than me all this this attitude has to uh, has to change Right. And to be supportive and not be suspicious, you know, in the name of discernment, you know, we could be very, very suspicious of people uh, or maybe because of ex past experience and so on. But we need to reject that, discard that and be supportive uh, rather than be suspicious of people. Okay, What else would help to focus on the team you know? uh, and to ask ourselves, you know, am I a person who works together? Am I a collaborative person who's helping, who's receiving help, who's getting information, or uh, am I, uh, you know, the opposite of that? Okay, and a, and a good way to see is, you know, is the team um, moving faster when I'm working together, or am I dragging the progress of the team? Am I slowing down the progress of the team? Um, so it's a it's a good question to ask. Right. So the mindset is to collaborate, to work together. Right. Um, well, when we uh, when we collaborate uh, together, uh, it means that we are. You no, know, when we see that each one in the team has his or her own responsibilities to take care of. Right now, that has to be that has to be done. That has to be you know uh, met with. That has to be taken care of. And in addition to that, not only looking out for our own interests, as the word says to look out for the interests of others also. How can I help them? Because when we help the team member, then the whole team benefits, right? So in ministry, we would see as, okay, you know, maybe not 
not divide ourselves, not divide the body of Christ, and not see another church as a competitor or another pastor or a ministry as a competitor, but to see, to have that kingdom mindset, to see ourselves as all being in the kingdom of God, and uh, therefore to collaborate. Right now, there are certain things you know when it comes to collaborating, like. Right? We, we, one cannot collaborate with everyone in the same capacity, right? For some, it could be just maybe our collaboration is to help them financially and it stops there, right? Uh, maybe uh, with some people, it is to give us, give them the time that maybe share some resources. Time is also a resource to share resources like a skill or a learning or a technology, right? To share with another ministry. Okay, this is what we have learned, and this is what we are using in our ministry. And so just want to share that with you, share that learning with you so that you can also. So all this, you know, these are ways by which we can practically collaborate. So um, with, you know, so there are different ways or levels of collaboration. Right? And uh, so it, it also depends on the vision of that ministry right? or that church that you collaborate that you that you seek to collaborate with um and and all you know so it, it matters right okay the third thing is commitment you know it goes without saying that if there is a half-hearted commitment and no no it's not a wholehearted commitment then it's it's going to become difficult to be part of a team and to help others in the team right we're looking at different things that we can develop in the team uh, so that the team functions well you know, when you're building a team right, these are uh, qualities that the team member needs to have or develop right? commitment um, when there are difficulties when there are challenges that exposes that brings to light our level of commitment you know are we still committed to the project are we still committed to the assignment are we still committed to the whatever work that we are doing the work of ministry you know, these when we face difficulties, when there are maybe trials, maybe there are challenges, these expose our level of commitment. You know, maybe when people give up, then that's that exp that shows us that okay, uh, this person is not maybe that committed after all. Right? They are committed to some extent when things are fine, but when there are difficulties, when there are challenges, well, the person wants to back off. Right, so it. It exposes ourselves personally, our level of commitment. Are we still committed? Will we still do it, whether we like it or not? Whether we, you know, uh, whether we uh, uh, benefited or not? Are we still committed? So, being committed, uh, you know, one good thing is it does not depend on gifts or abilities. Right? It does not depend on any anointing. It is a choice. It is a decision. And not it is a decision that we make, irrespective of how the environment is, how our surroundings are. Right? It's a decision that we make. So um, the commitment is strong when when the choice that we make, whatever we are committed to, is based on our shared values, okay? things that we hold in high esteem. Right. So when we when we look at okay uh, integrity, when we look at uh, uh, you know things like that in high esteem, that's our value. Then we see that that's something that um, um, that is something that we see that really fosters commitment, helps commitment, and we need to you know, we need to build that when we see we need to of course model it ourselves for our team. And we need to build that in the team. You know, talk about it in the team, saying, hey, "Guys, it is going to be difficult. Right? This is what we will face." Um, for example, you know, if there's a mission trip, or if there's a you know outreach, if there is a whatever, you know, be the thing that the team is doing together. It's good to, you know, it's good to, uh, just like how Paul would write to Timothy and say, you know, do the work. Uh, do the hard work, do the work of an evangelist, you know, endure. Um, uh, uh, you know, this is how everyone who who uh, you know, 
who prepares oneself in the secular arena of games and everything. This is one how an athlete prepares. So you need to be uh, ready in season. So um, it's good to talk to the team. Right? We need to do that and tell the team, you know, this is what you can expect. These are some challenges that you can expect. These are the hardships that you can expect. Uh, these are some things that you can, you know, that might come against you. But we need to press on. So want to invite you to be to be committed to the task. Now, despite all these things, you know, let's work our way through. Right? So, um, so uh, that would help the team to prepare their hearts to make a choice to be committed, right? Because the team needs to be committed in order to be successful, in order to you know, get um, things done, right? The fourth thing is communicate. We've been looking at um, the the list of things that we need to build, uh, which are helpful uh, for building a team. And these are qualities that we want to see in every team member, right? OK, so um, the fourth one is communication, or how healthy and effective communication um, is, is there, is prevalent in a team, right? is present in a team. So because we, as we saw earlier, if there is communication, then there is a healthy connection. Right? And if there's a healthy connection between team members, then there is understanding. It it improves, uh, it brings about understanding. You're able to understand the other team member or the members of the team. And when there is an understanding, then it brings about you know, a sense of caring, a sense of, uh, uh, it eliminates a lot of things. There's no misunderstanding. Um, you're able to work together better. You're able to relate to one another better, right? When you understand the person, right? this is the ch this is the background the person has come from. These are the challenges that the person is facing. This is why he or she, you know, is is doing what he or she is doing, and we're able to understand the person better. And even when they make mistakes, right? Uh, we don't come on them too hard. We are able to help them as a team to overcome the challenges, right? Rather than saying, "Okay, this person is worthless. This person does not keep up the commitment." You know, we're able to un we, we understand. Okay, this is what is the background. This is what the person is facing. Maybe there's some health challenge challenges. Maybe there's some challenges with the family. Uh, maybe there is there are some pressures that the person is battling. Uh, maybe some financial pressure, maybe some relational pressure in the family, and so, uh, so you know that person is struggling uh, with all these things, and therefore, let's help, right? Um, when it comes to communication, you know, there there is every every chance that when you put a group of people together, that there is chance for misunderstanding. There is also a possibility of. Uh, you know, because of that misunderstanding, some relational tension, right? Relational tension meaning conflicts or potential conflicts, right? It's not a conflict yet, but it can be if it's not addressed the way it's heading. It's all within, right? So the thing is this, the acronym D-I-R-T, DIRT, right? which means don't ignore relational tension you know if there is if you sense there is a tension uh, address it and talk about it maybe uh, you know maybe it's, sometimes it's not possible to just bring it out completely but just address it guys um, you know this is what we need to do you know you don't have to point out and say this person this person you know you are what you're doing is uh, you know the way you're relating to each other uh, is is wrong you know sometimes we it's just uh, you just getting a sense of tension between um, between the two and so uh, we need to uh, we need to make sure that uh, uh, that that is uh, you know that that kind of tension is addressed right okay um, what is the next one um, next one we see is uh, uh, com uh, competence. And competence is skill, okay, competent, being competent. It is skill. Okay, so what does that, uh, what does that mean? Okay, 
to be competent is to be skilled, to be qualified, to be capable. Okay, so um, to be skilled, what is it that you are to uh, to uh, do, or what is it that we are supposed to? Um, what is it that we are supposed to? Uh, you know, accomplish as a team? What is it that we are here to do as a team? Uh, what is it that we are supposed to uh, accomplish? Right? So to accomplish that, is every person skilled? Right? Is the person competent to carry out the task? Right? So, um, so here, here are some things to look at. Right? Is the person committed to excellence? Right. So it's not about skill, having possessing the skill, right? Maybe the skill is, uh, for example, um, it could be, uh, you know, learning and experience in accounts, maybe, or, you know, any other. I'm just taking accounts as an example. Now, the thing is to be committed to excellence <clears throat> right? in the accounting uh, task itself to be committed to excellence and not settling for anything short of excellence. Now, excellence is not perfection. Excellence is not never making a mistakes, mis never making mistakes, but it is bettering than the previous time. Now, it's a very, uh, it's a, as, a, as an individual, I say that I'm, let me do this better than how I did last time, right? So uh, to be excellent in it. And committed to excellence. Um, then, um, then another thing that helps is this: that we are uh, focusing, or we look at the details, like the small things. You know, most times, when when we look at certain things that uh, that became a big mistake or a big catastrophe, we see that. These small details were ignored, right? We see that there were there were things, um, these small things, these were ignored, and that became a big, uh, a very big challenge, right? Um, some of these very big accidents that have happened, you know, some something to do with the space shuttle. Um, Every you know, you look at some of these things when they when they analyzed what went wrong. We said, you see that somebody overlooked small detail, a small detail, right? So detail being detail over paying attention to details uh, will actually go a long way. Will help the person to be competent, right? Will help the person to be excellent. So. That is the second one. So committed to excellence, being detail oriented. The third one is being consistent. Okay, these are simple things, but to be consistent in the effort, giving the best, to be consistent, not just you know, in not just when the person feel likes it, feels like it, sorry. Or not just when the team or uh, some people in the team feel like giving their best, but it's to be consistent. That would also reflect upon their competence to be consistent, consistently performing, consistently doing their job well. Right? Uh, an example is um, uh, is a guitar company called uh, Taylor Guitars, which manufactures guitars, premium guitars. So they ensure that there are no bad quality guitars with or no guitars with any defect in a batch. Like in a batch, let's say they make about 20, 25 guitars. They make sure that there is not even a single guitar with, an, with a defect, with a manufacturing defect, with a defect to the word, with a defect in the de design. Their attention to detail is so stringent that they make sure that there are no defects. You know? so, uh, so even today, when they come out when they that is why their guitars are highly priced when they come out when they bring out guitars they make sure that there are no bad guitars or bad quality guitars you know so that is their attention to 
detail so um um so what i'll what i'll uh, what we can look at is uh, a few few more things to improve competence okay what is it focus right develop the ability to get the details right attention to implementation you know these are th some things that uh, that will help us with the uh, <clears throat> uh, competence okay okay then uh, along with competence you know this quality uh, is very very important which is dependability right i'm sure if you work in teams you know there are some people who whom we can depend on and you can give them the job and you can just forget about it right and you know that it will be done why because they are dependable you don't have to remind them over and over again you don't have to go behind them till the last minute um, you can just give them the task and you can be sure that it'll be it'll be done now they are dependable like they keep you informed if it cannot be done well in advance so that something else can be done they keep you informed if they cannot make it for something uh, for some activity or for you know in advance right so they are dependable right um so you know everyone knows okay whether they are dependable or not and we need to ask ourselves am i dependable am i dependable when people ask me when people give me a task um am i dependable or do i make excuses for not getting certain things done or at the last minute do i pull out right um, do i give excuses do i pull out of it altogether or um, you know do i do i communicate to the team do i do i communicate to the leader um my difficulty challenges in advance so that some alternatives can be done right these are you know these are qualities of being de dependable okay so what are some things the motives are pure right they have a strong sense of responsibility uh dependable team members uh, they have the desire to do the things they have a desire which means they are interested right uh, well it is difficult to be interested when things are difficult it is uh, when things are challenging right but they ensure that uh, they they want to do this job they want to get the job done okay. they have sound thinking and good judgment to become dependable we need to check our motives you know that will help us you know what is my motive in being part of this team like if my motives are not there in the sense it is not correct then i won't be dependable you know my priorities are different right if my motive is well i'm just here uh, i'm not going to work hard i'm not going to give my best uh, if my motive is that then my priorities will be different right so i cannot give my best i will not prioritize the things that i need to do with the team or for the team i will not prioritize i will not give it importance and therefore i will not be dependable like last minute i will pull out i will say uh, i cannot do this i'm not able to do it and so on and uh, well the team has been dependent on me right what are what, what are you bringing to the table right so uh, check your motives if we can even ask someone you know am i dependable what do you think am i reliable you know some, sometimes our own estimation could be wrong you know because we give ourselves reasons we justify and say okay this is why i could not this is why i did not whereas we need to uh we need to ask ourselves and we need to you know uh, step into um that responsibility Uh, so we can ask ourselves and get a realistic estimation uh, have i been reliable you know, we can ask our, maybe a friend maybe uh, someone else uh, and maybe some you know some critique right someone who um who doesn't always say good things about you you know 
it's it's a good thing to ask. So when they give the feedback, it's it's good not to defend ourselves. You know, when they say, okay, yeah, at this you know this particular day, uh, this particular event, uh, this thing that we were doing. Yeah, you you were not reliable. You did this, this. You did not do this. You know, you were supposed to submit something, and you did not come forward to do it. It was a group project. Maybe they'll, you know, when they give that feedback, don't defend yourself. Say, you know, but but this is why, this is why I did not. No, don't defend yourself. Just receive that feedback and evaluate it. Right. Uh, also, uh, if things are not right factually when they are giving the feedback, uh, we can clarify it. But without defending ourselves, you know, defending our action, clarify the facts. Okay, this came in at this time. I was asked to do it in this time, and so on. So clarify the facts, right? And another thing is to have an accountability partner, someone who is who will hold us accountable to our words, who will hold us accountable to our action, who will hold us accountable to our commitment. So when we have committed to something. Did you do it? Right? Uh, have you done it? Uh, okay, today you did not. Tomorrow, are you planning to? Right. So someone who will hold us accountable, uh, accountability partner. It could be somebody in the family. It could be some colleague. Um, they can say, you know, please ask me. Give them the right. Give them the permission to ask us those difficult questions, to ask us those uh, uncomfortable questions, right? Okay. So we looked at six things. Uh, we look at any any questions till now. Anything that you might want to add, uh, please feel free to ask. Right. Any any questions? Anything at all? Okay, so um, uh, the next one is, uh, you know, is a person disciplined? Okay, we looked at uh, is a person dependable, is a person disciplined? So dis being disciplined is one more quality uh, to see if you want to recruit uh, in a team or if the person is already there to develop that ability, develop that quality to say, okay, um, is the person um discipline. No, here's an interesting quote. Where there's a will, there's a win. Right? Or discipline is the refining fire by which talent becomes ability. Okay, so what do, what does it mean? There's a there's a skill, there's a talent, there's a gifting, but it's not translating into action. Right? It, the person is, is is not really doing anything about it. And to do that requires effort and discipline. Right? To use that skill. One requires discipline. One requires one is one is required to make a decision, make a choice. So, um, so it becomes talent becomes ability. Uh, it's because, only because of discipline. Okay. Here's another thing: discipline is doing what you really don't want to do, so that you can do what you really want to do. Right. So you do something that you want don't want to do at that moment. Because that is going to help you to do what you really want to do, right? So, which means that it could be in the area of fitness, it could be in the area of studies. Um, and, you know, at that moment, maybe you just wanted to just want to just relax or um, not do anything or not get into it. But those are the times when um, we really need to put in effort, maybe, right? and uh, and not take it easy. Let's put in that effort so that um, it is uh, we, we are able to do those things, uh, achieve those things for which we have been planning. Right. So discipline is uh, doing what you really don't want to do, what you don't feel like doing. It's just hard on your body and your mind, but you do it because it helps you to achieve or to get to where you really want to be or want to do. Right. It's paying the price in little things so that you can buy the big things. Right. Um, discipline is also, you know, it, it's not just actions, but before that, it's in our thinking, it's in our emotions, it's in our actions. Right. In all these areas, 
um, are we disciplined? Am I disciplined in my thoughts? Am I disciplined in my in my emotions? Right? Or do I just let loose? Do I just let go? You know, am I disciplined? Uh, am I sober minded? As the word of God says, you know, be sober minded. You know, Paul, I mean, Peter writes, you know, be sober minded. Um, or gird up the loins of your mind. Right? He says, right? which means, am I disciplined in that? Do I, is my mind passive? Is my mind you know, all over the place? Right? We've been given a disciplined mind by the Holy Spirit. Right? God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Right? So we use that, we utilize that. We don't let go of that. Right? Discipline in our thinking, in our emotions, and in our actions, of course. Not being rash, but being disciplined. So to increase this, to develop this, and to keep on being consistent in this, what do we need to do? We need to strengthen our work habits. Right? Maybe we need to start at a certain time, uh, you know, doing our whatever tasks that we need to do, plan ahead, and get those things done, and uh, and do those difficult things. Right? Maybe you know we need to make that phone call to that person. Maybe we need to send that email to that person, or maybe we need to confront and correct somebody. Right? So doing those things that are not comfortable. Okay, do, doing those things when we, whether we emotionally feel it or not. Well, that is going to help build discipline. Right? It's going to be like a muscle that becomes strong, stronger and stronger. So strengthen our work habits. Take a challenge, you know, something that will require us. Take some something that will some activity, something that will require uh, us to act on, something that will require strength, something that will require, you know, an intense thought process and so on. You know, act with discipline. Um, and also watch the words that we speak. Be careful of what you're saying, like what we're saying, and what is, uh, what negative things are we declaring about ourselves, about that particular problem, uh, and so on. So, wrong confessions, right? Okay. Any any questions here? Uh, we've been looking at a few things. Um, you know, these are all good qualities that we want to see. In uh, you know, in teams and team members, very important, right? So it's good to go back to this list and see, you know, in my the team that I'm leading, do I see this? Do I see this? In what levels do I see this? In what uh, level of um, development do I see this? Right? Is it lack of maybe? You know, it's not there at all, right? Some of these things, if it's not there in the people, then we need to make sure that it is there. You know, and why is it not there? Am I not modeling it? Right? Do I do people see that in me? That's a good you know question to ask because we can tell people do this, but if they don't see that in us, then it's very uh, highly likely that they will not do it because we are sending out a mixed message. And the message is that you know I'm I'm not going to do it, but you do it, right? And they're not going to do it either. So, do I model this behavior? Do I model this firsthand so that they can do it? Right. Okay, the eighth one is enlarging, meaning we we are adding to our team. Okay. So, what do we mean by that? So we're not. It's not about adding team members, but it's about adding value to each and every person in the team. What would add value to a person in the team? It's different for different people. Right? It's going to when we when we commend the people for a job that is well done, that is adding value. We are complimenting them for a task that is well done, and it's sincere and it's true. Right? And so it is. You know, they are acknowledged. They are appreciated. And it's add, adding value to them. They they are val they understand that I'm valued by others, right? Uh, but also it means that when we when we bring in into their lives an ability or a skill 
or a learning which they can use. It can be in the area of their work. It could be something that they can, you know, something that will help them with their family, something that will take care of their need, maybe something that they are struggling with. And we bring in that value uh, that takes care of their, that particular area of need or lack or a struggle, right? So we are adding value. Um, it can be from the word, it can, you know, something that the Spirit of God quickens to our hearts. We bring in, um, especially, you know, prophecy, right? A simple gift of prophecy we've learned. It brings edification, exhortation, and comfort to people. Edification, they are being built up. So we hear from God. We, um, you know, what is it, God, that will build them up? You know, what? What is it from your word that I can share? What is the what is the promise that they need to um, they need to help? They are down. What is the encouragement that they need to hear from you? And and sharing that will build them up in the inner person, like edification, exhortation, and comfort. Um, when we believe in them, their ability, you know, even before they start believing in us. Uh, when we believe in them, believe in their ability, believe in their skills, and see through their, you know. The superficial difficulties and see through through that and look at their strengths and ability and when we communicate that then that's adding value right okay um so that is enlarging right serving others before they serve us adding value before they even add value to us um this um next one is something that will really help the team uh, which really needs to be there this is enthusiasm enthusiasm which means excitement interest and all put together you know interest and enthusiasm and excitement about about life in general but really about what the team is doing specifically right um when there is enthusiasm then the, all the challenges they seem like very minor minor things right when there's enthusiasm you know, it's so contagious, uh, it just spreads between the team members. Uh, and we, we see that it is uh, it is a choice. It's again a decision, right? So we need to take responsibility for our own enthusiasm. Um, so we need to, you know, say that, okay, you can't depend on, you know, the other person and what they do in order for your you to be enthusiastic about your work of course we will always you know we can always encourage and uh, cheer the other person but for that person to understand for every team member to understand you know i need to be enthusiastic right i need to be uh, enthusiastic uh, about about you know ministry about work and uh, i need to i need to maintain my enthusiasm right okay so that's the ninth one okay we'll we'll take a break and then we'll we'll come back